Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm playing catch up on a project that's about a month or two old called Open Interpreter, which is basically the open source version of OpenAI's Code Interpreter, which if you recall, basically allowed you to have this sandbox Python environment in which you could run code to analyze data, create charts, do all kinds of stuff. And you could even upload files and have it analyze them, do things with them, mess around with the formats, edit the files, et cetera, et cetera. Now, why is Open Interpreter cool? Because, well, now you can do these Python-y things, including, you know, math and creating graphs and all this stuff, but locally on your computer, and you can essentially talk to your own computer. And I think it's probably most useful to people who are maybe not super experienced in using a shell or programming or whatever, because you can now have the power of anything you could do in Python or actually pretty much any programming language, as long as the language model knows how to use them to automate stuff, right? So tasks that would have taken you a long time to do manually, you can now do locally on your computer with the help of a language model. So we're going to do three pretty simple tasks that you may have previously done in code interpreter, but it's local on your computer now and we'll see what you think. Okay. So you'll notice that I've already got a virtual environment going. I called it interpreter, which basically is going to allow us to contain all of the requirements for this project into this little space. I also already have open interpreter installed and I did that by doing pip install open interpreter. You'll find the instructions of how to install it and get it going in the repository. Now to run it, we're going to just do interpreter. And the first thing it's going to do is ask us for an API key from OpenAI. So let's go ahead and grab that. Okay. You'll notice here, it says open interpreter will require approval before running the code. Use interpreter Y to bypass this. Now I'm not going to do interpreter Y because maybe I want to check what it's going to do before it actually executes. But if you just want to sort of have it run whenever it's figured out what to do, you can just put dash Y. Now let's just do something simple. Show me the folders in the current directory. Okay. So it asked me if I want to run the code. Okay. So I, you'll notice I have this folder called Biden frames. Now what's in there. Let's open that up in this directory. I have just a bunch of files of the president. I was messing around with stable diffusion a little bit and trying to do some video to video. And I basically got these frames of sleepy Joe turned into an anime. Come on, man, get a life. And so what's something simple we can do here. I'd like to basically, maybe I don't need this many frames for when I make the video. So I'd like GPT and open interpreter to basically delete all the frames that end with zero and we have 28 items and I'm going to delete all the frames that end in zero and let's see if it can handle that. So I'm going to tell it to delete all the PNG files in the Biden frames directory whose file name ends with zero. Now remember we had 28 files. So let's see what happens once we run this and it's going to ask me if I want to run it. Remember, cause I didn't pass the flag. So I'm going to say yes. And now that it's deleted them, I'm going to check how many files are left. Now there's only 13 items. And you'll notice that none of them end with zero. Now, as I've said, you can basically do pretty much everything that Python can do. And a lot of that is basically using Python to automate stuff and do tasks that maybe you'd use other services to do. So maybe you'd use like GIMP to change the color of an image or change the resolution and change the size. So another thing I want to do here is basically change this image uh, that I have of Donnie T and kind of you are fake news to a black and white image, which is just a sort of simple image conversion thing that you could do in a tool, but we can have an LLM do it. So let's try that. So what I'm going to do here is tell it to basically just modify this file to a black and white image and call it Trump BW.png. And I don't have to use any external software. I could just have the language model probably run some code, Python code most likely, and do this. Now it's probably going to ask me if I actually want to run it. So it's going to use pill. It's going to tell us what it's going to do. Okay. Checks if pill is installed and it's going to convert the image. Let's run it. And here's the picture of Trump now in black and white. Very cool. Okay. So now I want to have it do something a tiny bit more complicated, but it's still something that I would either write a Python script to do, or someone who maybe didn't know Python would use a piece of software to do. So what I have here is this one video that I was messing around with, with stable diffusion, where we had that trend, if you'll recall of the influencers trying to basically act like NPCs. So let's take a look at this. Oh, gang gang. Gang gang, mm, ice cream so good. Fire, 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 fire. I know a lot of you weirdos remember this. Okay, let's say that for whatever reason, someone wanted to extract the audio from this video <laughs> and make it their ringtone, right? So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So I've written a little bit of instruction for it, saying that there is a video in the current directory called Gang Gang MP4. Please extract the audio from that file and save it as a new file called ringtone.mp3. And I've asked it to use MoviePie just because I know that it's got the utilities to do that. So let's go ahead and see how that goes. Okay. 
It's going to tell me what it's going to do and ask me for permission. Okay, and it's done. Let's go ahead and listen to it. Fire, fire. Ooh, gang, gang. Gang, gang. Mm, feel good. Fire, 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 fire. Thank you, Lily. Slay, huh? That's a banger right there. Okay, so obviously these were some kind of contrived examples, but hopefully you got some insight into what Open Interpreter is about and you maybe got some ideas as to what the possibilities are and how you can use it on your own machine to mess around with your own files and documents and programs on your computer. And I think it, like I said before, is most useful to people who maybe don't want to bother learning how to maybe write a Python script or even ask ChatGPT to do it. You can just have Open Interpreter basically run on your computer and do all the manipulations itself. Edit files, edit movies, send emails, probably browse the internet, do all sorts of other AI stuff too by using external APIs, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.